Many people are afraid of religious life because they think it is so structured and so um, forbidding mm. and that um, religious life is a life filled with love and expectations and real life as most people are living. I think it's really important in any way that you're trying to live a Christian life to pay attention to what God's will is. God has a plan for each one of us and it's about discovering that and following that and being open to whatever those possibilities could be. I've been open to the idea since I was a little girl, but I've been discerning it more seriously since I started college. We take time for prayer, for contemplating, but we're also very much of an action com community. Uh, we spread out, we've been out in the world. Where the call is, we're not afraid to go, and we do go. Well, I think the gospel is a pretty wild and crazy like mm -hmm. challenge. You know, when you say being wild and crazy, yeah. many people think I was wild and crazy at the age of 78 to go to China by oh. myself, too. <laughs> <laughs> and I went, and I loved it, yeah. you know, and, and yes, we can do those wild and crazy things as we answer God's call. When I was in China, I was alone, but I felt very connected because I knew that people here were thinking of me, praying for me, and being with me. I felt as I was part of a community, part of a, a, a loving group of, of women who cared about me and would, would do what they needed to do to, to help me. I'm a part of, of a group of people who have the same belief, the same commitment. Not, the, not that we walk in the same straight, narrow line, because we don't. We, we spread out. We're individuals. We don't give up our individuality because we have come to community recognizing the gifts and the strengths and the weaknesses and helping each other to grow and relying on each other when you it's it's feeling needed and and it's being needed and it's needing others and realizing you can't do it any of it without without that strength well she's what gives me hope <laughs> like, <laughs> like if, um, the fact that her the community has let her be who she is and allowed her to go where she's yeah. called to be it gives me a lot of encouragement that I will also be able to go where I am called to be. I'm all about social justice and I'm all about like systemic change and I was really looking for a community that was prayerful but yet really pr progressive and prayerful simultaneously and had that mix of contemplation and action and um, I really think that this, you know, FSP has that, that great ability to be with the Spirit, to be, to listen, to discern, to, to be a woman of prayer, but yet to be aware of the world. I'm carrying around a lot of thick, heavy doubt right now, <laughs> and so it's, um, it challenges me to get through that doubt and to, 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 be at peace with it and that sort of thing and know that it's real. It's, it's real and it's necessary yeah. because you need to work through that. Keep praying Thank you. to be open. You can't skip over it. Just be with it and you'll know. I come from a family of 11, so I always said, I'm going to get married and have 12 children. I'm going to be better than my mother. You know, I'm going to have 12 of them. Well, no, I didn't have 12 biological children, but I had thousands of children because I worked with children so much of my life. I worked in pediatrics for 15 years. Then when the Hmongs came to this country, I worked with the Hmongs. There were 4,000 people went through the Indo-Chinese screening clinic during the time, and the majority of those were children. Each one of us as sisters can change the world. My philosophy is if I love you and you love somebody else and somebody else loves somebody else, we're changing the world. I have to throw away my stereotypes, you know, and I head into it with prayer and with an, an openness, you know, that openness I think is really key. And, 
And there, that's where you'll find freedom.